Hello and welcome to dyspepsia in the specialist area of surgery. Let's start off with a few questions. Question 1. Which of the following is not a symptom of dyspepsia? Read the question carefully. Three of the symptoms listed are characteristic of dyspepsia. A. Vomiting B. Belching C. Nausea or D. Hemoptysis The answer is D. Hemoptysis. We will discuss the presenting symptoms of dyspepsia, while hemoptysis is not a typical symptom. Question 2. In what age demographic would new onset symptoms warrant an immediate endoscopy? We need to rule out an upper GI cancer or a sinister underlying cause which may present similar to dyspepsia and which present especially at this age group. The answer is more than 60. Question 3. Which of the following is not a GI red flag symptom? Unintended weight loss, dysphagia, abdominal discomfort, or persistent vomiting? What is a red flag symptom? The answer is C. Abdominal discomfort. Epicastric discomfort is a symptom of dyspepsia, but not a red flag symptom. In this slide, we'll be talking about what is dyspepsia and its causes, symptoms, history in the clinical examination, investigations and differential diagnosis, management, and some OSCE tips. What is dyspepsia? It is a combination of upper GI symptoms of more than four weeks. The British Society of Gastroenterology defines it as a group of symptoms that alert doctors to consider disease of the upper GI tract. Dyspepsia itself is not a diagnosis, and it can affect up to 30% of adult population and accounts for 2-5% of all GP visits. It can be classified into uninvestigated dyspepsia, symptoms but no recent UGI endoscopy, or two functional dyspepsia. Endoscopy did not reveal cause for dyspepsia and can be further classified into three categories based on the Rome 4 classification. Postprandial distress syndrome, epigastric pain syndrome, or overlapping PDS slash EPS. PDS is meal induced dyspepsia with discomfort, pain, nausea, and fullness. EPS is epigastric pain or burning whose onset is not related to food but can be improved by ingestion. The overlapping, meal induced symptoms, and epigastric pain slash burning. Some of the causes. It can be caused by problems with the esophagus, stomach, gallbladder, bile ducts, or pancreas. It can occur with gastric duodenal ulceration, gastric cancer, but most commonly, it is of uncertain origin. Common drugs that causes dyspepsia are NSAIDs, steroids, bisphosphonates, metformin, theophylline, and calcium antagonists. Some of the symptoms they get are epigastric pain or discomfort, early satiety and postprandial fullness, bloating or belching, heartburn, gastric reflux, nausea and vomiting. Now the red flag symptoms. Red flag symptoms are alarm features. At this point, they would need a two-week referral for gastroscopy. Some of the features are vomiting, bleeding, may be presented as anemia, abdominal mass with unintended weight loss, or dysphagia. You can remember them as V-bad, very bad. In the history, the presenting complaints symptoms as described before, but ask about onset especially. For the history presenting complaint, go through Socrates. Are they relieved by eating or lying down head up? Family history or past medical of peptic ulcer disease, gourd or upper GI gastric malignancies. Medication history, history of NSAID, metformin. Social history, high fat diet, alcohol, smoker. And review of sy systems, unintended weight loss, vomiting, blood and stools or vomit. And screen for red flag symptoms here. Symptoms suggesting prompt endoscopy include persistent vomiting, bleeding, 
abdominal mass and intended weight loss, progressive dysphagia, and family history of upper GI cancer. This is a non-exhaustive list when taking a history. So make sure you try and cover all your grounds. In the clinical examination, symptom-based assessment of UGI symptoms, but there's always a danger of misclassification. You can either overdiagnose of GORD or underdiagnose of H. pylori, which is also a related disease. Red flags on examination may be a palpable mass in the abdomen. In your investigations, use an ECG to rule out inferior MI. Do an FBC to rule out anemia or infection, CRP, ESR to check for inflammation, a non-invasive H. pylori test to check for H. pylori infection. Some of the tests you can use are a urea breath test or stool antigen test. But before all of the above, first consider does the patient need an urgent OGD? Is there any GI bleeding? If so, refer immediately. Are there any red flag symptoms? If no to the above, then consider the most likely clinical diagnosis and a trial of treatment. The differential diagnosis include functional dyspepsia, H. pylori infection, Gordon esophagitis, peptic ulcer disease, and upper GI malignancy. Functional dyspepsia is the post-infectious onset of symptoms and psychosocial factors. H. pylori, previous history of peptic ulcer disease, family history of it. Gordon esophagitis, family history of gourd, hiatal hernia, heartburn, acid reflux, dysphagia, and bloating. Peptic ulcer, history of NSAID, past ulcers, smoking or ingestion. An upper GI malignancy, new onset of worsening dyspepsia in, in a person who is older than 60 years with alarm features of vomiting, bleeding and anemia. It is easy to confuse dyspepsia with other GI conditions like IBS, Barrett's esophagus or gourd as they can all present with abdominal pain. But gourd, a condition where reflux of gastric content causes troublesome symptoms, it is gastroscopy proven esophagitis and gastric acid sometimes regurgitates into the mouth. Barrett's, it's a constant reflux, leads to esophageal cell changes from squamous to metaplastic columnar epithelium from the gastroesophageal junction extending proximally. This is an algorithm of new onset dyspepsia explaining little about investigations and management. For the management, review their medication and offer lifestyle advice. Ensure H. pylori testing to rule out infection and offer empirical full dose at PPI therapy for 48 weeks. This will cure symptoms for most patients. If symptoms return after initial PPIU, then use PPI slash H2A at low dose. Now, if they need surgery after symptoms persist even with lifestyle changes, medications, and even intensifying doses on medications, then consider an anti reflux surgery a.k.a. laparoscopic nisen von duplication. Nisen's von duplication involves wrapping the fundus of the stomach around the lower third of the esophagus to strengthen, strengthen the sphincter, used to treat severe cases of gourd. Some ask tips. Remember to explain why you'll carry out investigation and what you'll be looking for slash ruling out, as diagnosing dyspepsia is ma mainly ruling out other conditions. Remember the red flags. And keep in mind the differentials and be able to list three off the top of your head as this can be an OSCE question. Let's summarize with a few questions. Which of the following is a symptom of dyspepsia? Dyspepsia is an umbrella term for a variety of upper GI symptoms and not just one symptom. The answer is all of the above. Question 2. Approximately how long did the symptoms need to persist for it to be classified as dyspepsia? When taking the history, it is important to assess onset and duration of symptoms. The answer is four weeks. Last question. In an eyes and duplication, which two parts are laparoscopically wrapped around each other? The fundus and antrum of the stomach, the fundus of the stomach and the lower third of the esophagus, or the fundus of the stomach and the lower two thirds of the esophagus? The answer is B, fundus of the stomach and lower third of the esophagus. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation.